don't worry. A brand new episode of Gassy Radio, it's on its way. But first, a word from our sponsor, Darren Marlar. Check it out. Ghosts. Demons. Aliens. The unexplained. The paranormal. Stories of the weird and the dark. Submitted by authors and fans. Weird Darkness. Celebrities. Politicians. Criminals. Oh wait, I already said celebrities and politicians, didn't I? True stories of individuals and moments of duh. The Daily Dose of Weird News, every weekday on YouTube at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Warning. This podcast may contain Sorry. explicit language. And maybe some other sexual things. <laughs> Your discretion is advised. <laughs> Welcome to uh, uh, Gassy Radio, your home for gaming, anime, superhero news, and entertainment. Waft in and listen. Here are your hosts, Randy and Luigi. Excuse me. And welcome to a brand new episode of Gassy Radio, son. Where the jokes aren't as funny as our farts. <laughs> as always, I'm Randy Lee Beasley. <laughs> And Luigi Bonanno. There's a dragon on this table, and I'm going to fart in three, two, one. Yes. See, the farts are way funnier than the jokes. All right. We, uh, we're gonna, we don't have our special correspondent with us, so we're not going to do a gassy unboxing this week. We will wait till next week, so let's just kick it into the normal gaming section. Pass me a controlling. Grab that beer. It's game time. All right, and welcome to our gaming section. Yes, Pokemon Sun and Moon have new Alolan region variants. A couple were already revealed. You know, the Execute Tall Tall. I think we talked about that one yeah. already. All the stuff, but there's two new ones now announced in Nintendo's magazine, the online magazine, because there's no more Nintendo Power. Uh, Cubone and Marowak are now ghost fire types. Marowak is literally like a Hawaiian dancer now. And we got, what else do we have on here? And Meowth is going to be a dark type. Oh, really? So that's a good one. That's a good one. We uh, do have a couple of them that were rumored. Uh, did you get the rumor about Jinx? Uh, yeah, there's a rumor about Jinx and all three of Eevee's evolutions being different, but we cannot confirm it yet, but that would be sick. Oh, that would be sick. But we like we were looking and shit, and like some of them don't make sense. Like Some asshole's like, oh yeah, Jolteon's going to be water. Like That's not what they're doing. They're taking the look and... They're, they're changing it. They're not going to just fucking mix and match with the... Like, it's so stupid. Right. Don't make, like, Vaporeon... Like, that's, that's the thing, though. They, they can't do that because Eevee has so many different evolutions. You can't just change three. Everything would have to be changed then. That's why... I don't think it's... I don't know about this one. You fucking posers. Hosers. Yeah, I'm not... I, I'm not 100% on that one either. That one... It seems a little iffy to me, but... The rumor... Well, not the rumor. The tale is why Meowth is dark in this region is because it's bred from the special Alolan family, the family heritage. Also, there will not be gyms in this region. What? There are challenges. You have to complete things, find ingredients, beat Pokemon, beat trainers, and then you have to fight the big kahuna on each island to get the special, like, passport. They took out gyms in the newest generation. That is confirmed. You have to fight the big kahunas to get their, like, seal. I, I, okay. Is it going to be the same thing as Pokemon where, like, I have to beat him and get a specific passport in order to have a th level 50 Pokemon? Yep. Fuck that. And also, the big, a uh, really big rumor is that your whole purpose of going to this region is to get the respect and approval from all the big kahunas, and your character will be opening the first gym there. And the Elite Four come to you in the end. So, Pokemon's definitely going in a new direction with this. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit more interesting, and it's going to vary. It's going to be a variant of what we already know 
and they're trying to like shuffle things up a little bit for us, which I do like. Right. But it just sounds like it's the same thing all over again. I don't I honestly don't like the whole thing about the the leveling and badges and everything. I don't yep. like it. I'd rather them just let me have my level 100 Mewtwo if I can get it and be done. Right, and that's the thing. Even with the Pokemon bank cuz they're doing a special thing where anything from the first generation Pokemon you could transfer over, etc., blah blah blah. You're going to have to still beat said big Kahuna to make like if you catch your Mewtwo at the end of Pokemon Red in the Cerulean Cave, you can have him already and ready in Sun and Moon, but he won't listen to you until you get that said badge to, to power him up. Right. Which is stupid, because you have to get that far in the original game to get him. You have, almost have to, like, do it twice now. Right. But it's, say hey, it's whatever. I mean, if, if that's the only way to have both the Fire and Ice-type Vulpix, I'm okay with that. You Let's, know, I'm okay with the I'm okay with the way the old things went because you kind of have to get a little bit further in the game in order to play against people, so you have to be roughly the same level. But still, I I don't like that. Like, I've beaten the game 400 times. It's the same game, right. just a different region. Right. And then I can't use anything that I've been using because I'm not. I don't have. They should have something where like you already have like certain number of badges so you can use high level Pokemon and it'll transfer your shit over from the last game. That That's what they should do. Right. But anyway, uh, the first episode in Tall Tale Games Batman is out and everyone is saying it's like 10% Batman and the whole rest of the episode is like Congress bullshit where you're Bruce Wayne and I saw Cinemassacre they played it and it's horrible. Like, you're Bruce Wayne, and every once in a while you get to, like, say different options to respond. And in the very end, you're like, you finally get to be Batman and do a little bit before the episode ends. That's very disappointing to me. That's the whole thing with these episodic things. That's why I'm not happy about Final Fantasy VII being episodic, is because right. you're going to you're gonna get up to points where you can start doing shit, but they're going to be like, okay, well, we can't let you do it too long because you're going to have to be able to do it in this other one and not be tired of it. Right. Same thing with Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2. It was episodic, and it's like, okay, I bought, like, the whole game with all the episodes for Resident Evil Revelations 2, and I'm just like, by the time I got to episode 3, I didn't want to play anymore. I'm like, it's fucking... Like, what are you doing? Right. It's like, I don't know. I can't. It's and then sad it to spoils see. bits and pieces for you for the next game. And yeah, it's not, not bad. Apparently it's not doing too well. Uh, Lucasfilm steps in and stops. We talked about this a couple podcasts ago. The fan-made Battlefront 3 game from, from being pursued. They found the original files and they were going to complete the game and release it to fans for free. We talked about this. We were excited. But Lucasfilm's like, nope. They got a cease and desist order from them. So we'll never then see. Why don't, it. why don't they fucking make it? Right. I. So that's that's uh. They got to cease and desist, but they're not selling the game either, are they? Nope. They were just giving it away for free. They weren't making a profit on it. Right. So since they're not making a profit on it, can he actually give them a cease and desist? Well, because it's still Lucasfilm property. They never got uh... permission to finish it. They were just doing it for fan service. See, they should just they should do it for their own goddamn fan service. Right. Ah. But yeah, sad day for Battlefront fans. Let's see here. That, that, that's all I got for the games, because next we're going to end the gaming section with Pokemon Go update. And holy fuck, this is a lot of <laughs> updating for Pokemon Go. We'll go over some of the good stuff before we get into the bad. All right, let's go. All right, so they they already started with the gym leaders, as far as I know from what the update said. They already started with the gym leaders. I haven't seen any yet. Yeah, the I, actually, I can pull up the whole thing right here. Um, I took a picture of it. Let's see. I have the exact fucking, where, where, hold on, let me see where it's at. I can't, here we go. This is this is what the iOS update, like, because I play it on iPhone, this is what it says. Pokemon Go has been updated to version 1.3.0. Below, here are some release notes and comments. Added a dialogue to remind trainers they should not play while traveling at a certain speed. Trainers must confirm they are not driving in order to continue playing. Made improvements to the accuracy of the curveball throw. Fixed a bug that prevented nice, great, and excellent Pokeball throws from awarding their appropriate experience bonuses. Fixed achievements showing incorrect metal icons. Enabled the ability for trainers to change their nickname only once. Resolved issues with the battery saver mode and re-enabled re -enabled this feature. Added visuals to team leaders Candela, Blanche, and Spark. 
and they're currently testing a new variation of the nearby feature, which has now been turned into the sightings feature with tall grass next to it. And so far, from what myself and others have said online, nothing has changed with that. They just look different. Now the Pokemon have tall grass behind them. But it, it, there's still no, like... And it's called sightings instead of trekking, or... or yeah, I just whatever. said that. It's, it's, it's sightings. Right. Which, they need to get rid of that shit and put in the tracking again. They need to just fix that already and get it out. Let's see here. They, some some better news is um, gym poaching will be stopped. I don't know how many times, just like two days ago when I was at the Schomburg Library, a.k.a. Mecca, I'm sitting there, I defeated a Snorlax, you know, and then you have to heal your Pokemon, but I wasn't healing it this time. I was just going to throw in another high-level Pokemon. And I went, to, before, like, I beat the gym, and before I could even fucking click on it again, it was gray. Before I, I went to click on it, in like that one second, and it, it went from Valor, I beat the gym, it was gray, and before I even clicked on it, it turned into an instinct gym. Because people just fucking sit there, wait for the gym to be defeated, yep. and they click it right away. They're I poaching. fucking hate they, it. They need to stop with the poaching. You should, as, as soon as you beat the fucking gym, you should automatically be put in there. Yeah. Because that's what's going to stop the po- poaching, and that's what I think they're going to be doing. Right. Automatically heal your your uh, top rank Pokemon and throw it in. Right. Let's see here. Bah, 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 bah. And we, uh, we're going to let people know, starting with the update prior to this update, the game now scans at a rate of once every 10 seconds. So what that means is they change the coding so Pokemon only stay visible for 70 meters. Coupled with the slower scan refresh rate, it will be much more difficult to see and catch Pokemon while traveling at speeds greater than 12.5 miles per hour. Plus, now they added in the new update that you have to confirm you're not driving and that you're a passenger in a car if you're going fast. It's getting fucking ridiculous at this point. Well, my buddy said that he was going like 30 or 40 and he was still... It was uh, Michael. No, I, they still yeah. popped up for me. Look, look how fast we were going when the Snorlax popped up. Michael J. Fox was saying that he was, he was able to catch Pokemon just fine going 30 miles an hour but you really shouldn't be playing while driving anyway right and just in case we never mentioned on here but this is for information the more you know incense work is the following way you have a 300 second which is five minute spawn time if you're standing still or in one area during an incense you have a 60 60 second spawn time if traveling 200 meters per 60 seconds which means you have to travel 200 meters in that 60 second time for a Pokemon to appear every 60 seconds. So you have to walk like three blocks. Right. And if you're just standing still, Pokemon will only appear every 300 seconds, which is five minutes. Right. And it's only good for 30 minutes, so right. you get six Pokemon out of that. It's not worth sitting around, guys. Uh, a lot of them, the, the <clears> update <throat> prior to this one, with it, when they totally took out the fucking footstep tracking, iOS and Android users fully bombarded the app stores with one-star reviews. And that yep. got them going, okay, we need to fix this now. That's why in this current update, they're trying to fix it. And, I mean, it's not good enough yet still. But they're going to keep working on it to get our fucking um, sightings fixed so we can actually right. find the fucking Pokemon. Right. They did say that they, that's the next thing that they want to do is fix that. But they, I guess they, they haven't really had the time because they're trying to fix so many other glitches and bugs too because it's just it wasn't a completed game when we got it. Right. It just wasn't. So... But anyway, that, that's about it. But here's the best part. This is this is actually an action-packed segment today because the Pokemon Go update is about to turn into one of my rants, which I have not done in a long time. And it's a Pokemon Go-themed Randy's Rants, so get ready, motherfuckers. Damn it, fucking hell! You are now listening to Randy's Rants. Pokemon Go edition. Are you fucking kidding me? The first time it fucking happened, I had a Squirtle and a Blastoise already. My wife and I caught a Blastoise by Citibank in fucking Bloomingdale. The fucking War Turtle pops up on the fucking nearby screen. We're driving, we're driving, we're driving. Uh, we fucking stop so it's safe for me to actually play the game because my wife goes, Hey, it popped up. So we stop, put the car in park, we're catching it. She fucking catches it one try. I throw it. It goes in the Pokeball. It breaks out. The game fucking freezes. I don't get the War Turtle because I have to restart the game and it's no longer there. Flash forward, like, just like last week, where driving on a really good road up in Michigan that fucking gives you rare Pokemon up the ass, an Arbuck pops out. We both had Atkins at this point. A fucking fully loaded Arbuck pops out. My wife catches it. Fucking app's not even already working for my fucking phone, so she has to sign out and sign back in under my name on her phone. It works. The Arbuck's still there. She gets in there. She throws the fucking Pokeball. Freezes. We redo it. It's it's still there. It works. Throws the Pokeball. Breaks out. Runs away. Like, are you fucking kidding me? That's, that's, that's not the worst part. Not the fucking worst part. 
yester fucking day. We are driving past Taco Bell by my house, getting into the Tony's parking lot. All of a sudden, a fucking Nine Tails pops up in the nearby, which was now sightings. I'm fucking freaking out, like, oh my god, oh my fucking god, oh my god, because Vulpix is my favorite Pokemon, and it turns into Nine Tails. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is a rare Pokemon. Who uh, it might not pop up because of the new fucking refresh rate bullshit. We get into the Tony's parking lot. It fucking pops up. My wife parks. Fucking, she doesn't have her phone, so she can't catch it. I fucking give it a raspberry. I throw an Ultra Ball. I fucking miss somehow. I don't know where. I fucking miss. I give another raspberry just to be safe. And I go to throw the fucking next Ultra Ball. And it fucking freezes. The Pokeball is just laying there. Ninetales is just fucking standing there. The goddamn loading screen up is in the top right. I fucking sit there for fucking six or seven minutes. And it won't fucking go away. And at that point, I'm like, oh, fuck. Now if I even restart it. Because I didn't want to fucking have to turn off the app. Because I, from experience with Virtual and everything, what is it going to be there? So I was just waiting and waiting and fucking waiting and fucking waiting for this damn thing to unfreeze so I can catch a fucking Ninetales. Never does. I have to restart the app. But guess what happens? I close it out. It takes me another eight fucking minutes to restart the app. And by the time I open it back up and get to that same spot, there's just Pidgeys. Fuck you. Fuck your ass. You wasted two of my Ultra Balls. You fucking shit on my ass, Pokemon Company. You give me the taste and the prospect of a Ninetales. And then your damn fucking server bullshit that always fucking hits me. At least once or twice a day, I could be playing fine all fucking day, but at nighttime, something pops up. Oh, I mean, I did get a Geodude the other night. I it was like fucking 2 a.m. I woke up, opened up my app. There was a Geodude right across the street. It popped up. I caught it. My first Geodude. Yay, fuck me. The goddamn Ninetales. I'll never forget you for this. I'll never forget, and I'll never forgive. I have a lot of shit going on right now, and to fucking take a Ninetales away from me, I will find you. I will hunt you down. I will rip out your throat. And feed it to your fucking senile grandma. And she'll think it's fucking spaghetti. End of rant. And we're going into the fucking anime section now. Anime. Animated. Assholes? Possibly. Alright, and welcome to our anime section after that fiery display of... Jesus Christ. <laughs> anger. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll call it anger. He's ready to kill people here. But anyway... Um, we do have a little bit of news. Uh, Bleach is finally coming to an end in manga form. Um, the uh, the company did say, I think it's Viz Studios. Viz Studios was saying that they're going to make an announcement next week. So us fans are hoping that they're going to like finish out the anime or at least you know give us a spinoff or something. Um, Let's see, I have a little bit of a review of Magi, I think I said it was. Yeah, it's Magi. Um, it's a Netflix original, it's called Magi, The Adventures of Sinbad, which actually brings you to the beginning of this entire anime series, in which dungeons appear, people go and capture these dungeons and get incredible powers, and one of the most powerful people is Sinbad. Yes, the Sinbad of the... The seven seas. No, the Sinbad of oh, the Seven whew. Seas, man. Oh, freak me out. Sinbad of the Seven Seas. Um, let's see what else. I want that Turbo Man. Right. <laughs> let's see what else do we got for for anime news? There's not a ton. The we newest got... episode of Dragon Ball Super, fucking amazing. You need to watch it because at the very end, Trunks pretty much says, "Hey, hey, Dan, to Vegeta, hey, Dan, show me what you got, like Goku did, go Super Saiyan three, and it <laughs> fucking ends. So, which means." Hopefully, if we pray to Akira Toriyama, <laughs> we get a Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta soon. Trust me. All you have to do is just share your energy with him. <laughs> Wouldn't it be dope if Vegeta goes Super Saiyan 3 and then Akira Toriyama's bullshit lie? We, like we called. Trunks is like, now now I have a reason to match you. And he goes Super Saiyan 3. Right. I'd fucking cry. Oh, God. I'd cry. I'd cry tears out of my penis. My anus. My nose, my oh, eyes, God. and my that, ears. That'd be dope, because he, he'd just be like, alright, now that I've seen what you got, see what I got. Boom! <laughs> that would be great. And I agree, that's gonna be... Ah! You think you have won, but I am here to fucking kill all of you! You sons of bitches! Ah! Fuck! Luigi, run! Ah! You're gonna eat it, you fucking bitch! You like bacon, you fat fuck! 
This is now my show. <laughs> and again, your anime section has sucked for ages. Just because you change it to the animated assholes, you think you can get away with it? Ah, ah, fuck you, Kermit! You can never kill me, you... Ah, ah, you're gonna die here, Kermit! You fucking... Ah, 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 <laughs> Bring it, bitch! Ah! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Oh, shit. Is that a gun? <laughs> ah! Ah! Do it! It's in your mouth, Kermit! Go on, you fucking do it, you little f- <sighs> I don't know what just happened in the studio here, but I'm pretty sure Kermit with a C is Where'd he go? dead. Where'd he go? His body's gone. Um, oh shit. We might have a small problem in the studio, so... Yeah. The blood trail leads outside. He's gone. Uh, but he survived. How? He sh Did you miss? No, the gun was in his mouth. Oh god. He uh, is a puppet, so... Let's, uh... Maybe they just don't die the same way we do. Oh god. We must find his weakness. But anywho... <laughs> I think the uh, anime section's <laughs> over. I think the anime section is over, too. We killed somebody and gave you some good news. So, you guys enjoy yourselves with that one. Okay. On to the superhero action! Uh, yes, you're uh, listening to the uh, superhero section. <laughs> uh, I killed Miss Piggy and ate her bacon for breakfast. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Welcome to the superhero section. Um, that was intense. Anyway, apparently Jeremy Renner tried having the studio kill him off multiple times during the first Avengers filming. Wait, what? Yep. Hawkeye. He wanted his character to die off because Jeremy Renner quote unquote said, I just got into my character and all of a sudden I was already being put under control by Loki. I didn't feel like I brought my character for its full potential. Now I feel like I have, but at the time, I just wanted them to kill off the character because I didn't feel like I was bringing the character justice. I'm glad I didn't kill him off because I like Jeremy Renner. And I like it. I like, the, I like his role in the Avengers. He's pretty badass. Anyway, David Iyer, the director of Suicide Squad, proceeded to yell out, Fuck Marvel at the premiere of Suicide Squad. And he has now apologized for it. People, <laughs> people, who, people with even such high caliber as Stan Lee have went on his defense saying it was all in good fun as most people from Marvel and DC are friends and the fuck Marvel was more or less Just a, a jab shout out. because we are doing so well and maybe Suicide Squad was going to be good. I saw Suicide Squad and I'm not going to do a non-spoiler review or a spoiler review until Luigi sees it. Uh, all I have to say is I'm not a big fan of the Joker-Harley relationship because Joker cares way too much for Harley. And as you know, in the comics and animated form, Harley's kind of Joker's punching bag. So some of the shit Joker does in this is kind of way, like, not in... I mean, they, well, of course, you got to make it different. But still, it's a little crazy, but I love the movie. When Once Luigi sees it, we'll do a full-fledged review. A lot of people are saying it's shit. A lot of people are it's saying It's more that. or less not that. It's the critics everywhere are giving it a bad rep, but fans are loving it. The critics okay. give it a 32 on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score is 77. Yeah. That's... It's, it's, it's just fucking critics attacking DC. As always. Of course. Of course. So, I recommend watching it. I recommend seeing it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to see it. I was just saying that it's... I've heard nothing but, like, a bunch of bad reviews about it. Yeah. Like, even a couple of people that were fans of DC before were like, this movie fucking sucked. I was like, what? Mm. Anyway, 50 Cent is developing a superhero series for stars? We all knew how good his fucking video games he based on himself were. What, what was it? Was it 50 Cent Blood and Sand or some bullshit? He, he made, he tried making a couple video games and he sucked at it. Now 50 Cent's trying to make superhero movies. Dumb. What? Superhero series for stars. Sorry. Yeah. Right. What, what, 50 Cent the Rapper. That's all we have so far. Is he so not even like what is he, is he like, does he turn into 50 Cent? 
That's what I'm saying. Like, like it's so stupid. Like the game happening? was all around him being in his record studio, and then someone's like, "We need this person killed," and then in the video games, you just go and kill someone. Like, fuck off. <laughs> Amazon Prime is rebooting the live-action version of The Tick, and Jackie Earl Haley, who is famous for playing Rorschach in Watchmen and the Freddy Krueger in Freddy Krueger reboot, is going to play Terror. So I'm pretty fucking excited for that. All right. Uh, I mean, you can't really beat Joe Swanson as The Tick because he had the perfect right. frame and build for it, but we'll see what they do. Right. I mean, I'm so excited to watch it. I'm glad they're bringing him back. Uh, I have a note in here before I saw Suicide Squad. Jared Leto's Joker goes back to the jerk Joker's first appearance roots, an insane, ruthless gangster. That is true to an extent in the movie, but the also extent is he's like a pussy-whipped asshole, and the Joker's not like that at all. No. But anyway, moving on. And not to mention <laughs> the fact that apparently all the shit that was too hardcore that would have made the movie rated R was cut. You really don't see too much of the Joker, and half the fucking shit you've seen in the teaser trailers aren't being used. Because speaking of which, someone is trying to sue... The film company and the theater chain because he spent he drove so far to get to the theater in London and he like he wasted so much money just to see those scenes that he quote unquote saw in the teaser trailers but didn't get to see in the movie. Now he's trying to file charges. And it's just like if you do not watch movies, they use different stuff for promotional material all the time. Right. Sometimes shit gets the cutting room floor. You don't know what they did. Who's to say we're not getting it in the special features? So have fun with that lost dude asshole. But yeah. That's that's ridiculous. Don't sue for your fucking money back. If you don't like a movie or something, leave the theater early. Go up to them, and be like, "This isn't you worth my money." You have thirty minutes into the movie, not not including previews, to get your money back. Other than that, you've seen too much of the movie and you can't get refunded. That's simple. It's the rules at all theaters. I used to work at a theater. That's what happens. This fucking guy waited till after he watched the whole movie, post credit scene and all, and is like, "I need my money back." Yeah, you Fuck ain't getting you. your money back, dude. You're not getting your money back. Eat a cock. Eat six cocks. But yeah, that's all I got for superhero. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't Let's really get into know. our last little entertainment section. Mark 2, WAP 7. Entertainment engage. We are engaged. Bam. Entertainment section, son. First, we're going to get the sad news out of the way. And by sad news, I don't mean like, oh, I stubbed my toe or whatever. Sad news as in death. Rest in peace to David Huddleston, a.k.a. the Big Lebowski. We wish you well on your journey to the netherworld, sir. Hopefully you're not burning in hell. Hopefully you're in heaven. Amen. Hopefully. (laughs) The Transformers fan film, Generation 1, Hero, which is part one of two, is fucking a million times better than any fucking Michael Bay Transformers film. They made custom costumes, custom drones and remote control cars out of the same material they made out of the costumes to make them match when they transform. Fucking Bumblebee sacrifices himself. Optimus is getting fucked up. It's like it's like the classic fucking it's so fucking good. And it's that's like awesome. that's what these Transformer movies need to be. Not this right. bullshit Michael Bay like, "Oh, we changed the look of the characters again. Oh, we're bringing back some of these fucking guys. Oh, we're bringing Hotshot into the Transformers universe, which clearly means the fucking Optimus is going to die again, and now Hotshot's going to be the new leader." We fucking know this cuz we're Transformers fans. We've been watching it since before when we were born. Well, by that I mean we got the fucking Blu-ray and DVDs and stuff of Transformers Generation 1. Blah. I kind of grew up at the end of that going into Beast Wars and all the other good shit. But like come the fuck on. We all know what's going to happen cuz Hotshot's going to be in the movie. They brought back a couple he's bringing back a bunch of other fucking characters we haven't seen since the first two and all this other bullshit. Eat a cock, Michael Bay. Go and watch Generation 1 Heroes, the Transformers Generation 1 fan film and fucking cry because they did it better than you on a fucking like thousand dollar budget you bitch all right well you just got told michael bay all right and luigi has some uh <clears throat> interesting american horror story season six news for us isn't that the one that's gonna be slender man um it's a mix right now from the teasers of slender man and like the hills have eyes and the big rumor subplot is we're finally gonna see what happened with tate's demon love child from season one Oh, shit. Finally. So, because, like, the first four seasons, he's like, oh, yeah, nothing's connected. It's all not connected. And then season five starts. He's like, oh, like, Jake, everything's hey, connected. Here's all the episodes, <laughs> all this other shit. And it's just like, okay, it is connected now. Right. Like, haha, we tricked you. They pulled in the Karatoriyama. They're like, yeah. nope, nope, nope. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. It's an anthology. <laughs> nope. It's all taking place. It's all in the same universe. Kevin Smith movies. <laughs> 
There's going to be the movies. There's going to be a splash remake with Channing Tatum as the mermaid character, and the girl from Goosebumps who plays the mom's sister, and the girl who's also in Twenty Two Jump Street as the chick that Jonah Hill's fighting towards the end, the one that actually like wants to like him fuck her, fuck her or whatever. She's like the bad guy's daughter. She's playing the Tom Hanks role. So they took two actors from Twenty Two Jump Street. Channing Tatum is now the is going to be the male mermaid instead of the female, and the Tom Hanks character is going to the weird girl that tries to fuck Jonah Hill on Twenty Two Jump Street. So that's interesting news. And that's for what? The Splash remake. The fuck is Splash? Splash is a wonderful <laughs> film where Tom Hanks is a busybody, always working, finds a mermaid, falls in love with her. Lots of stuff now happens. Now I remember. Now right, I remember and now that. they're totally just like the fucking Jumanji remake. They're totally gonna shit on it now. Oh god! Hopefully, Pete's dragon is not as bad as I'm. Pete's assuming. dragon is actually just a giant porno. <laughs> the dragon's like, this is Pete's head. <laughs> Pete's dragon two: the return of his cream. That's gonna be a good one. Oh, Ju- oh Julian god. Bell is her name, playing the Tom Hanks character. Who gives a fuck? Um, you want to tell him about William Defoe? All right, so. One of my favorite anime series, they're going to make a live action. and they're, An American live action. An American live action film. And uh, they're playing the part of a devilish clown death god named Ryuk with William Defoe. I really hope they don't put him in clown makeup because that would just be fucked up. <laughs> a lot of people who want him to play Joker, is, or they're getting fucking hard as a rock right now. Kinda. Oh, yeah. Well... Ryuk is kind of playful, harsh, and funny. So I mean, he's kind of like Joker, but he doesn't—he doesn't like actually like full on stab somebody in the chest with a giant knife. He—he he just kind of writes it, their name down and they die. That's it. Aww. <laughs> so, but it's—it's. It's, it, I think it would be funny with him in it. I, th- I think he could pull it off as long as they don't put him in actual makeup and they make it uh, like CGI Ryuk in there. A pumpkin head reboot is coming. Pumpkin head scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid. Oh yeah, those movies were terrifying, right? dude. I don't even. I they were so bad I blocked them out of my head. That's yep. how bad they are. Yep. I can't. I can't even. I got to go back and watch them. Now I have a little story for you. It starts off with a voyage among the stars that is abruptly interrupted by a jeep crushing your fucking body. Anton Yelsh's parents are trying to sue Jeep. Because the car was recalled and they were never notified about it. Makes perfect sense yep. to me. Hey, you you done fucked up. You killed a famous star and didn't notify him that hey, maybe your Jeep could kill you. <laughs> like <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and uh, we're gonna end. I mean, the last little bit of news for the entertainment <laughs> section. Jimmy Schmitz, Nero from Sons of Anarchy is once again going to be playing Bail Organa in Star Wars Rogue One. Very excited. All right. He's Leia's stepfather. You see him mostly towards the end of uh, Episode 3, where Natalie Portman's like, so this is how Liberty dies, with thunderous applause, and he's like, <laughs> I'm in Sons of Anarchy after this. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's there. He's, uh, yeah. He's coming back. Well, that's, that's some pretty good news. Other than that, that, that's it. That's the end of the entertainment section. Well, not really. Not really. We got more? Yeah, we got a little bit more. Did we already say the part where Anton Yelch was crushed skull? Okay, I would, yeah. No, yeah. I was, yeah, was going to go with the whole uh, Drake being a little bitch thing. Oh, yeah, this is more music. This isn't even in our... This is good. Go ahead. So, <laughs> fucking Drake. You know that little bitch that played in, uh, in uh, Degrassi. Degrassi? Yeah, he's the, the Canadian black gentleman. Yeah, he decided that he was going to challenge Eminem to a fucking rap battle. What? It started off with him dissing Eminem. He's been dissing everyone lately. Drake's on a tirade. The newest one was Eminem. Like, fuck off, dude. You're going to get killed. Right? Like, what the fuck, man? Like, this guy, he he got too big for his britches real quick. He just really did. So now he thinks he's untouchable. I swear to God, he's gonna be dude. like, I need one dance, and then Eminem be like, I fuck your bitch, I fuck your mom, I stick you in the cock, and I'm like, he's gonna be fucking just <laughs> throw out his sick lyrics at him, and Drake's gonna be like, I'm gonna go get shot again. Yeah, I. Drake's see, gonna wish a fucking jeep ran him over. See, here's how I think this is gonna play out. Drake, Drake is gonna be shooting off sperm into his boyfriend's mouth. Well, yeah, but uh, 
He's gonna be shooting off raps like a sniper. One shot, you gotta reload. Eminem's gonna come in with a motherfucking machine gun and just rail your ass. I mean, there's no reason why you should have ever, ever, ever dissed him or challenged him to a rap battle. Even Drake's friends are like, dude, you done fucked up. Yep, everybody has been telling him, dude, you done fucked up. And then, then after all this, the guy's got the balls to confess his love to Rihanna in front of a live, live stage audience. Right, and Rihanna's <laughs> like, I'm friends with Marshall, and you're about to get murdered, boy. <laughs> right. I dumped my head. <laughs> Pretty much. But I think that ends it all for our entertainment section. That is just fucking, Drake, you're stupid. <laughs> You're going to wish you had a one you, dance. You may have some good songs, but you're nothing compared to Eminem, man. I'm sorry to say it. He's just, he's the rap god. That's why yeah. he rapped about being the rap god. Because he can do that and get away with it. <laughs> There's nothing left to say. You're done, dude. So. <laughs> Did you fucking hear that? Did you guys hear that listening at home? <laughs> oh, God, there it was again. Is Kermit back in here? Do you hear something in the fence? I'm watching you. How did you survive a gunshot, Kermit? Next week, you're going to find out what it's like to survive a gunshot. Both of you. You're mine. Uh, okay. Um, well, this has been Luigi Panano. Dude, Kermit just ejaculated on you. It's on your shoulder. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Take it away, Darren. You've been listening to uh, uh, Gassy Radio.